Hi everybody, this is Code Chris. Um, today I'm going to walk through my specific, uh, to date version <clears throat> of my keyboard layout, and let's just walk through it. So first thing here is this is um, been changed to be a Dvorak keyboard layout. I moved the keys around. Um, you'll notice that um, the vowels A O E U I are on this hand. And then you can kind of get a nice rhythm going when you're using Dvorak, which is one of the reasons why I chose it. Um, these special symbols are all just within like a quick jump. And what's cool is that this keyboard, um, the reason why I switched from the Red Dragon, link down below, is because um, I wanted to learn touch type. And so OrthoLinear provided the opportunity. But also, bam, look at this. I can jump between different layers that I have set up. So let's go through some of those layers. So the first layer is um, the base. And what's interesting about this is my escape key is here. My, this is actually like my, the backspace key, delete key. I don't remember actually, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't really use it as much. Yeah, so that's my backspace key. But in practice, a majority of the time, I'm actually using these bad boys down here. So this one over here is uh, my backspace, right? And then this one over here is my delete. And the reason why I did that is my thumb, it's so much is wasted on that big space bar. So I can have that little space bar, and then when I want to delete, it's just it's just this, right? So um, more on the lines of like, uh, this is going, right? And so here what I can do is I can just boom like that, right? Or if I wanted to switch the other way and go over here and delete from the front, right? Um, so I have that, which is pretty cool. I like that. Um, I also use auto shift, which basically means if I hold the key down a little bit longer, it makes the letters capital. Um, so I actually don't ever press shift A, shift B, shift C, whatever to get a capital A, B, C. If you go to um, the most common thing I use, if you notice here, it says LT raise. So that what that means is that if I hold down, oops, if I hold down the space bar, it actually activates a whole set of other layers of keys, some of which have been reassigned values, which you'll see on the screen above. Um, or I can press the space bar and it works like a space bar or hold it, activate the other side, and then I can use my arrow pad, right? Um, and then some of those are actually chosen specifically to be utilized in um, Visual Studio code. Um, what else? Uh, I noticed I was using right click a lot for certain things. So uh, now what I can do is if I have something, um, if I'm tabbing through or selecting, I can uh, right click. And then I can, you know, go ahead and, you know, grab whatever I need to grab or select whatever I need to select, right? Um, let's see what else. Uh, keep using this escape key as the escape key. What's interesting, too, is if you hold it down, you have your arrow pads, right? Up, down, left, right. Um, but what I've actually done is over here, I've done the modifiers, the control, the OS, the shift, the shift, and the alt. And the reason why I have the two different shifts is based on if I wanted to reach... Uh, uh, alt shift p or control p or you know whatever right um uh, not alt shift p but control shift p right or um or anything like that so um because then i can use um i can do things like this where i can be like all right well um so i hold my my space key now i have access to the arrows which by the way i haven't moved my hand at all um so then i can just take this i can do um alt and shift right and because I have the line, I can just boom, 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 right? If I wanted to jump to the end, um, this is a key I didn't use before, but now I love it. Um, so I have the end key here. So I can press end, and it'll jump to the end of the line. Um, what's really nice is because I have the controller here, too. I can do things like, um, you know, I can jump between words, control with the arrows, right? Or shift with the arrows, or control shift with the arrows, and select, you know, bigger portions. Once again, you want more details, I can make it in a different video. Just let me know if you're interested. Otherwise, I assume nobody you know, is interested in, in knowing more about that. Um, and then what else? Uh, oh, yeah. So you got the home, which actually brings you to, you know, uh, the beginning. 
So I can do home, uh, and home, right? Back and forth really quick. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I can press control, and that brings it to the end. Very end, right? Uh, at the very beginning. Um, on the lower, the lower level, um, I have this uh, uh, ability to get all the special characters that are used by holding shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, shift five, right? You have to, you have to you know, press those keys. So instead, um, instead of pressing shift, um, I have this layer, which is just dedicated to like a lot of those special characters. And um, because it's Dvorak, well, these keys stay the same, right? These will stay the same. That stays the same. Um, and really, the big the big changes are going to be this one. Do, 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 do. And I have it as it's something that you hold down um, because I noticed in my workflow, it just seems to be better than like activating layer, press a button. Activating, leaving layer, and then going back, and then, you know, I need it again, right? Because in code, we're going back and forth between, you know, um, depending on what you're typing, you're usually jumping back and forth between, um, you know, standard characters and then special characters standard characters numbers right um but the majority of the time it's the special characters so i wanted that ability to just have that uh be like the modifier layer really you know, what it should be named um and then i have opening and closing brackets I'll show you so we have um so we have uh opening and closing brackets right so uh we can do and I have them like all in the same row so that I can always sort of uh, quickly identify, um, you know, just by touching like, oh, okay, yeah, like this sh uh, is the parentheses. And if I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't mean the parentheses. I meant, uh, I meant this uh, squiggly thing, right? And it's closing it for automatically for me. There we go. There's the closer and, you know, oh, it's not that one. It's this one, right? And it just kind of makes sense to my brain that they're, like, all just kind of in the same, like, area, right? Oops. Area, right? Um, and then same thing because I'm kind of following that pattern of, like, pairs. Well, I think of shapes a lot. So this is, like, the little dash. This is the big dash. This is the sideways dash this way. This is the sideways dash this way. Um, once again, thinking of it in, in terms of shapes. I don't think of my keyboard as a bunch of like characters i try to think of it as a bunch of symbols and um and organized groupings so that in my brain i'm not trying to remember where every key is rather i'm just naturally navigating to where it should be located um so um Let's just continue here. So uh, I've already showed you the raise layer, right? Uh, the adjust layer. Um, you know what? I really don't use this one at all. And that, but what I've done is, so um, that's interesting. So as I've refined my craft, <laughs> my craft, as I've refined my, uh, my, my, my keyboard layout, I've noticed I, I try to avoid repetition, right? I don't want to remember different keys, um, the same key having different things on different layers. Really, this layer, um, yeah, I don't, okay, whatever. I actually don't, just don't use this layer. So I, I, I took a lot was in this layer and I, I applied it to the lower base and the raise so that I don't have to deal with that. Okay, so this is probably a more significant one. So this, uh, I called it the function because I initially was using functions, you know, F1, 2, 3, 4 over here. Um, but I've noticed more and more I don't necessarily care for it as much. Um, so what I've ended up doing is I've been using, like, I'm using, like, F5 and F12 a lot, right? So I really, although these exist, um, you know, I predominantly just use this one or this one. I don't know. We'll, 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 I'm, I'm still kind of tweaking things around. Um, so uh this is the number pad right so this is your standard one two three four, I mean, why, am I, why am i not just showing you this is your standard number pad one two three four five six seven eight. Oh, sorry all right okay so apparently i have uh hotkeys set up so. anyways so number pad uh so we got the number pad going on here and then it's it's the standard calculator right so i actually i do have this 
I do have this as uh as a number pad. Um, I actually don't use it predominantly for when I code. Um, actually, I really haven't messed with it too much. I literally just got it. But my purpose for this is very different and has nothing to do with code. Um, but uh, but it is good for illustrating the, the the idea of this is normally on your keypad. So here you've got the exact same keyboard number layout, except the very bottom here. This is a zero, and this is your delete because you make mistakes. And this will be my uh, my decimal. And I try to keep the layouts as consistent as my brain is familiar with. What else do we got? Okay, so this is where I put all the extra stuff that I don't really need or use, but it's, you know, I wanna make sure I have all the keys available, right? So, um, oh, actually, before we even get into that, one thing that is cool, is uh this right here oh you can't even hear the beeps it's too quiet let me let me turn off the noise canceling there you go you can hear the the stuff in the background um what was i gonna say oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay so check this out so So I can add something like that, right? Um, okay, anyways. Um, ah, sounds much better. Okay, well, anyways, um, so that takes care of that. So this is the, the, the number row, right? Your traditional one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. I just got the standard uh, layout. And um, what I did do is I grouped um, F1 through 4, 5 through 8, right? Because those are kind of like those three sections, right? And they fit in very nicely with this. So if I did ever need to have the layout available to me, I, ju I just do, right? I just do. So um, sometimes this layout does not work for me because I need to press two keys at the same time or whatever. And if like it's not efficient yet on my keyboard layout then what i do is i just jump to my qwerty keyboard do what i gotta do and then jump back um but i would say about 95 percent of my 98 percent of what i do is predominantly going to be on here um now i don't actually in the beginning, I learned pretty quick that it's not a great idea to customize this, in my opinion, uh, to customize this, at least not in the beginning, for uh, like Photoshop and all the different uh, editing programs and whatever. Like, I mean, I guess that's like the main thing you do, but um, I would avoid that just because you already have a lot of muscle memory built in to... Um, some of those keys um it's i don't think it's worth changing that process and that's why you keep a qwerty around um but i think i think this is a good spot to stop for now before i i, I continue to ramble well anyways um so that's my keyboard layout in a nutshell um i can go into more details if you're interested or explain why i made some of those choices Whatever the case is, a link to my current version of my keyboard layout will be uh, below along with um, links to some other stuff that um, you might find interesting. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.